Welcome, my name is Mike Rappling and I am the Vice President of CDW Central Region Corporate Business. First, I want to thank you for the trust and investment that you put in the CDW and your teams that serve you. We appreciate that very much and do not take that for granted. I'm here today to kick off what we call our CDW Reimagine Strategy. Over the past 30 years, we have built our business all in an effort to support our customers' technology needs, and that continues to hold true. But what's different is that the last many years and for years to come, we have and will continue to add capability via acquisition to complement our organic growth. In the recent years, we have made eight acquisitions in eight consecutive quarters, and you should expect this type of behavior from us as we move into the future. Simply put, we have and will continue to invest so we can be as prepared as possible to deliver you full stack solutions to drive your company's full stack business outcomes. This CDW Reimagine strategy and video is purely focused on helping our customers understand our newest capabilities for you to leverage to complement the capabilities that you currently leverage. You can expect continued updates as we continue to grow and invest. I hope that you find this beneficial and I wanna thank the technology leadership team at CDW for sharing these capabilities, sharing best practices, and ultimately how their teams can help you serve your end customers and win in the markets that you serve. Thank you in advance for your time and your partnership. Hello, my name is Connor Waddell. I'm the Vice President of the Digital Experience Practice within CDW's Integrated Technology Solutions Group. My team represents roughly half of CDW's pre-sales force within, this, within the US, covering such technologies as enterprise networking, collaboration and workspace, security, and our software business. I'm here today to talk to you about uh, CDW's thought process around why we do what we do, our focus around outcomes, and I'm gonna give you five areas where CDW's uh, focused on delivering for our customers. First, the why. So we've been focusing a lot on clarifying our message on why it is we do what we do. We've landed on one simple statement. That is, we make technology work so that people can do great things. So those great things depend on whether you're delivering education outcomes for in a K through 12 school district, if you're a patient care provider, or if you're in a manufacturing, just making uh, improving your, your products and delivering to your customers. At the end of the day though, CDW makes technology work to enable each of those missions. Now, the second thing uh, to think about why we do what we do, now we think about uh, how we support that by focusing on outcomes for our customers. CDW has created the I Care framework that uh, has our teams focus on why our customers are, what they're looking to achieve and why they're looking to achieve it through uh, the technology that we support. I care, I care stands for innovation is an acronym, but it's the acronym is innovation, cost, agility, risk, and experience. As you think about each of those, have them uh, each of those outcomes. We could say there's maybe six or seven, but generally we wanted to land on the things that our customers are trying to accomplish with the technology we're using to support it. So when we think about a specific project, whether that's deploying network security for our customers, looking at a cloud migration, we always try to think back to what is it we're looking to accomplish and why, what else do we need to do to make sure we accomplish those objectives for our customers. Next, if you've worked with CDW, you know we have, we have a large group of OEMs that we support. We have thousands of delivery engineers and pre-sales resources that help enable these outcomes for our customers. We wanted to put a stake in the ground to say, what are the five areas that we wanted to think about where CDW had eminence, we have expertise, and we have an opinion. So we're calling the five areas of focus for integrated tech in 2022, with a caveat here that these are not the only five things that we do, but they are areas where we believe most of our customers are in an area of transition. And those five are, five are workloads and data, cybersecurity, hybrid work, talent orchestration, and service management. So just think about, let me pull out a couple. So hybrid work is a great uh, great one to think about in that our customers, 
and all of us move to working remotely. As you can see here, I'm in my remote office. I've been working here for quite some time, um, but we, we now are in a position where we're thinking about what does the return to office look like? And for those of you that have started that journey, it's actually a fairly jarring transition where we found that many times when you bring in people now from an office, it actually degrades the video experience that we've come to expect, uh, the quality that we've come to expect. So what our teams are looking at are what, what, what is the hybrid work strategy? How do we enable that strategy, whether that's the collaboration outcomes through calling platforms, conferencing platforms, video, or customer care, the underlying infrastructure to deliver a quality experience, or the security framework to make sure that that happens uh, safely and securely. So when we work with our clients, we're looking to, to make sure we understand the objectives we're looking to achieve and continue to have uh, the high fidelity environment that we've come to expect through pervasive video calling and video conferencing. Second, around workloads and data, almost again, our customers are in a, in a, a period of transition, going from current state, whatever that is, to a future state. That could be looking, saying, uh, going from a three-tier architecture where you're saying where we have a, an end of lease or end of maintenance or just useful life uh, coming to an end, and then looking at what the next state of that, of that environment is. Now that could be a new three-tier uh, storage infrastructure. That could be hyper-converged infrastructure. It could be modernization of the applications into a cloud platform, or it could be using cloud patterns and practices to create a private cloud infrastructure for our customers on premises. Again, CDW specialty here is understanding the outcome and the why our customers are looking to achieve, and then delivering the technology, uh, infrastructure, and recommendation to support those outcomes based on what's right for our clients. So again, our approach here, as you see, whether it's hybrid work, our cybersecurity framework, workloads and data, we don't come in with a preconceived notion of what's right. We represent what's best in the market and then position, understand our customers' needs and what outcomes they're looking to achieve, and then position the right outcome, whether that's on-premises, in the cloud, a uh, heterogeneous uh, mix of, uh, of different technologies to achieve the best possible uh, set of outcomes or experience for our customers. The last one I wanted to pull from this list is talent orchestration. As we know, we are all in a position where talent in our industry is at a premium. And CDW has, so CDW has three ways in which we help our customers address that challenge. So first, if we're looking to free up capacity for our customers, we have an extensive list of managed services where we take on the management and ongoing operations of platforms for our clients. Second, through our digital velocity team and, and uh, through our uh, services teams, we have many mod flexible models for staffing resources and providing whether that's fungible levels of support to our customers or staff augmentation. Uh, we, have a, we have multiple options that we can bring to find the right people uh, to help augment the staffs of our clients. And third, we have a uh, service uh, engagement uh, entitled uh, workforce development. Now, this is specifically in the security space today, but workforce development is built around assessing the current capabilities of our customers, uh, our customers' employees, and building a training track to enhance those skill sets based on the roles that they're in. Look for us to expand that out in other areas as we look into uh, 2022 and beyond. So for talent orchestration, again, where CDW helps, really thinking about those three areas, whether it's offloading tasks through managed services, providing support through staffing, flexible staffing models, or enhancing the capabilities of our customers, employees, we bring multiple uh, approaches to, to our clients. So that's the, the five areas of focus. Now, if I go and connect those back, again, what we're working through is looking again at the eye care framework. So I'll pick experience and then linking that into where CDW has the ability to help our customers deliver an outcome around that, uh, around that area, around experience. So with that, there's this, think about these uh, as, as interconnected. So experience, we may bring in an opinion around uh, how we handle customer care for our, for our customers' customers, how we provide that in a secure framework, and then have a, again, deliver the applications in a flexible, agile way 
uh, for our customers then to uh, to be to be flexible in their own right. So that's what we had for you today. Again, why CDW does what we do, the outcomes that we're orienting to, and five areas where we believe our customers are in transition, where CDW's capability, eminence, and an opinion on how our customers manage those transitions. Thanks all, and have a great day. Hi, I'm Andy Cadwell, head of CDW's Digital Velocity Solutions Business Unit. So what is CDW DVS? Well, we're nearly 500 expert only, full stack engineers, architects, developers, and consultants focused on really modern patterns and practices, and all of our people are handpicked from industry. So what do we do? Uh, well, we have a very strong technical focus on really modern technology patterns, such as automation of everything or technology orchestration, DevOps, consulting, software engineering, cloud consulting and adoption, and literally all aspects uh, that you can really think of around modern enterprise IT architectures. Our team has helped really dozens of Fortune 500 government entities, healthcare organizations, and more with some of the most complex problems in these areas. And we've worked on some of the largest and most complex cloud deployments in the world. So I was asked to talk about really what's new in 2022 for DVS. So the first thing that's super exciting for us is we're moving into um, uh, and leading CDW's overhauled cloud go-to-market motion. And this is basically binding our team with CDW's traditional cloud team to create a really highly differentiated approach from other sort of run-of-the-mill cloud and cloud managed services consultants. So what does that look like? What do I mean? So first, we always take a velocity first approach. So we're not just another cloud console, but by incorporating really our award-winning adoption services, automations, application modernization services, workload service catalogs, and battle-tested code into every engagement, uh, large or small, we can create much more velocity for you. We have the expertise to do it. Next is everything for us is automation first, even with sort of traditional lift and shift workloads. We have a very unique landing zone offering that's open source, multi-cloud, and it works equally as well for both lift and shift and fully native cloud uh, and containerized workloads. So this means one pattern for everything that you do in cloud. Um, next, everything's cloud native. So wherever possible, we're using container-based technologies and orchestrations as the star of the show. So you know we definitely have one of the strongest application modernization practices in the industry. Through CWDVS, it's one of our first and foremost offerings, and we bring that to you in a very efficient way. So a lot of our customers ask next, okay, well, what about private clouds? Can I get the same uh, experience if I want to build a private cloud? And the answer is with CDW, yes. So we apply all the same patterns, uh, all the same technologies on-prem as we do in the cloud. So we can give your developer teams the same consistent experience and pipeline velocity, really no matter where the application lives. This could be private cloud, hybrid cloud, or in multiple clouds. Um, finally, you know, uh, we're very proud to offer CDW's expertise as a service. So traditional cloud MSPs that you might be used to focus on cloud operations, and so are we. We have a very good practice there. But if you want more velocity in your cloud managed services, our experts are available as part of your enhanced or premium cloud managed service. And what this really does for you is drive faster adoption and more efficiency out of your cloud. So in DVS, uh, you know, next people ask, okay, well, what about tech? So outside of what I've just mentioned in cloud, DevOps, uh, app dev and app mod, uh, our digital velocity solutions group has some of the best expertise in the world on data, big data, data ops, data rationalization and visualization. So data you know, is probably your most important currency. Uh, Digital Velocity Solutions can definitely help you extract more value uh, from any of your data use cases. So what about AI use cases? We have tons. One of those that's gaining really fast traction is in customer experience. Our AI-based intelligent customer experience contact centers can use AI agents to offload costs, increase volume, and create amazing customer experiences. We combine our proprietary CDW offers uh, and software and development with Google and Microsoft AI technology and have helped some of the largest customers globally get closer and more intimate to their customers using these technologies 
while saving a ton of cost and creating massive efficiency. And we can integrate all of this with your existing contact center technology, no matter what it is. So we make adopting AI super simple. Finally, do you ever wish that you could just have the resources but own your own outcome? Well, yes, you can. Our technical services business unit inside of Digital Velocity has a highly unique and award-winning resourcing business model that can definitely change the game in your business. You can use some old school technical staffing business, but they really, you know, we, we all understand that they, they send unqualified resources and waste time because they don't necessarily understand the technology. Our technical services team is in the technical business or technical services business and technology business. So you get better quality resources and actually you can get them right now. You need a body today? Yes, we can do that by pulling from our existing bench to help augment your team. Do you need a long-term resource for a year or more? Yes, we can help you with that as well. Um, do you need a vetted partner or a vetted team? Our TS team has dozens and dozens of vetted partners that you can consume through, through your CDW contract and with a guarantee. Who does that? Finally, need a new kind of like MSP or managed solutions provider to manage all of this, our TS team can operate as your technical staffing MSP with all the value and the trust that you have in CDW, but with a really highly differentiated approach. Well, that's a whole lot of stuff happening for 2022. I hope that you all get a chance to engage with our team of experts only in digital velocity solutions in a live opportunity. It's so much fun winning and working together. Thank you. My name is Tim Ancona, and I'm the Vice President for ServiceNow Solutions here at CDW. I'm here today because CDW is going through a transformation and advancement of its business model such that we deliver more and more services to customers to truly help them integrate and utilize the technology they're purchasing from us. I came to CDW in October of 2019 when CDW acquired my company, Aptris, which I founded in 2013. That company, Aptris, was founded on the principle that we could deliver great outcomes by implementing ServiceNow for organizations across the U.S. And my entire team came over in 2019 and we continue to build that team. But if you take a look, many of you might think of CDW as this company that only sells uh, hardware and software and delivers them and known for the expertise in what they do there. Well, we still do that. And we're quite proud of that heritage and the work that we do there because we think that's an important part of the life cycle. But as you think of the full stack of technology that you utilize, you utilize the acquisition of the technology is only part one. Another part of it, likely, is how you utilize the technology. And I'll bet, for many of you, ServiceNow is at the forefront and core of how you utilize technology. You know, I, I talk to people, and I talk to them about how ServiceNow is often seen as the heartbeat and the brains of an organization. It's the heartbeat because it tells the organization how it's doing. Because if we've set ServiceNow up correctly, we're getting information from all different systems of record that you have, and we're displaying them in dashboards, and we're giving alerts to IT people need to fix things um, and deploy new technology. And it serves the brains because once you start implementing things like orchestration, what we do is ServiceNow gives instructions to other applications <clears throat> to go do work on hardware, software, whatever it might be. Those are kind of the things that ServiceNow does. What we do for organizations is we help them along that journey. We help them implement ServiceNow. We help them maintain ServiceNow. And we help them really advance their transformation and the journey along what is ServiceNow going to do for their business. The way we do that is we focus on this three-legged platform that we call um, people, process, and platform. Three-legged, excuse me, stool, I should say. People, process, and platform. Many organizations talk only about the pl platform, technology. Let's face it, technologists love technology. But here's the deal. The technology is only one part of that three-legged stool. We've got to do a great job on process to make sure our processes are aligned to standards within the industry, to standards that work for your company. And we have to make sure that people have gone through appropriate organizational change management training and that they can, and they can adopt the new technology and the new changes that you've put in place. So when we approach a project, it's often that we start out by doing these things that we call process alignment workshops. What we do is we ask you about your processes. We want to know a little bit about the how, but more importantly, we want to know about the what. What are you achieving with the process? And then what we do is we go about looking at how ServiceNow does that automatically, and we say, 
How can we make that process work better so that it gets to that what faster, less expensively, less input, less work, et cetera, et cetera. So we go through and do that. And then, we, we, now that we've built this process within, tech, within ServiceNow, we also take a look and say, how do we make sure that people can be pulled along? We don't want to push them, right? We want to pull them along our journey. And if we pull them into our journey, we go through some organizational change management. We make sure that they understand why the change is being made. We make sure that they understand the new technology and that they can very quickly adopt it and go to work. So if we look at that, that's kind of the what we do. How we do it, I think, is really important. And I've been in consulting services in one way or another for over 25 years. And during that time, in, when you talk to almost any consulting company, what they will tell you is, our people are the difference. Our people are the difference. Our people are the difference. And you know, there's truth to that, but here's the deal. People come and go. What Patrick Lencioni, wrote, Patrick Lencioni wrote about in his book, The um, Advantage, is that the only sustainable competitive advantage is culture. So what we've done is we've built a culture that attracts the best people and allows them to get better, allows them to support each other in a team and atmosphere that says it's okay to make mistakes as long as you own your mistakes and you get better along the way. And, and along the way, we teach our people three things. We teach them to be responsive to customer needs, internal needs. We teach them to be easy to work with, because companies aren't easy to work with, people aren't easy to work with. And then finally, we teach people to be excellent. We don't say be perfect. In fact, I don't want perfection. I want excellence. And when we're excellent, what that means is we do what we say we're going to do, when we say we're going to do it, and we do it right the first time. I really encourage you to give me a call or an email, talk to any one of my over 200 uh, members of my team that are focused day in and day out on delivering successful outcomes for you in the way that you manage and implement ServiceNow. Thanks for your time. Have a great day. Hi, this is Ben Weiss, Vice President of Product and Partner Management here at CDW, focused on Endpoint Solutions. I've had the luxury of being with CDW for the past 22 years, and the first 21 and a half years of that spent entirely in sales, in a, different, a number of different roles within sales, first in public sector, then transitioning to a role focused on geographic uh, customers in the Southeast, and then most recently focused on vertical markets within corporate sales focused on financial services and nonprofit customers. I've recently transitioned to VP of Endpoint Solutions within PPM, a completely different role. I have an incredible team that, uh, that uh, rolls into me and uh, helps me with some of the PPM uh, related information, but uh, I'm bringing a different perspective as it relates to that sales experience. It's an interesting time to be focused on product and partner management, given that we are living in potentially unprecedented times as it relates to supply chain. So I'm going to talk a little bit about supply chain. I'm going to talk about what recommendations that we're giving customers during these unprecedented times. And then I'm going to close with a future look in terms of how we're handling the modern workspace. So supply chain, I, I talk with OEM partners daily, and in those conversations, they're telling me that things are likely going to get slightly worse before they get better. Uh, this recording is happening in August of 2021, so you can expect through September, probably October, things will get progressively worse before they get better, but they will get better the question is, at what rate? So the hope is that things uh, progress through Q4 and Q1, with ultimately returning to some degree of normal in Q2. However, most of the OEM partners believe we're probably looking at some type of abnormal environment for supply chain through the end of 2022. That being said, we're asking our customers to plan as much as 14 to 16 weeks in advance of your purchase and ultimately place that order with CDW in anticipation of those needs. Once we are able to produce a quote for you, we're asking you to produce an order as quickly as possible as the other phenomenon that we're seeing are regular price changes, anywhere from four to six percent, and it's happening about every four to six weeks with OEMs. So we're asking you to, to take advantage of the pricing that we're offering by purchase, placing a purchase order as quickly as possible to avoid those price changes. As we take a look forward and we think about the modern workspace and how all of our lives have changed and how 
the office or the workspace that we're used to in the past likely won't look the same in the future. CDW is taking a look at our lifecycle management and first doing an inventory of all the different things that we can offer customers as it relates to the discovery of what it is you're actually looking to accomplish with your endpoints to deployment as it relates to configuration or remote deployment of your applications and images to the management of those devices once they're in your hands. And then finally, looking at the refresh and recover component of starting the cycle all over again. We have capabilities in each of these areas. We also have unique financing capabilities if you're looking to uh, resemble something like a device as a service solution where you're paying per user per month. We're definitely seeing an increased interest in devices as a service. Oftentimes customers looking for moving from CapEx to OpEx or potentially looking for cost uh, cutting or transparency in that transaction. And again, we're helping customers with this conversation daily. I can assure you as it relates to any solution focused on endpoint, and again, that's desktop, notebook, display, um, as well as printer and accessories that no one in the business can deliver a solution better than CDW. Thank you for your time. Hello everyone, I'm Tom DeCoster, Vice President of Hybrid Infrastructure Solutions at CDW, and we are laser focused on helping our customers achieve outcomes through full lifecycle, full stack, hybrid infrastructure solutions. So I'm gonna talk about three different things. One is what's happening with customers right now, what HI solutions are helping customers achieve their outcomes, and then finally, how customers can get started quickly with, with HI solutions. So let's just talk quickly about you know, what's happening with customers. There's a lot that's on customers' minds right now, and we normally start these customer conversations with this view because we find that our customers are trying to typically achieve at least one of these five outcomes. So when it comes to innovation, customers are asking, how do we bring breakthrough experiences to our customers? Cost is, is always out there. So customers are asking, how do we not only reduce cost, but how do we make sure that we're making best use of our existing resources? Agility, increasingly present. How do we adapt quickly to continuous changes in customer demand? And then for risk, customers are saying, hey, how do we go about protecting our reputation making sure that we're compliant and also making sure that we're manage, managing risk all at the same time. And then for experience, customers saying, hey, how do we go about impressing our customer at every digital touch point? So let's talk about how some of the HI solutions are helping customers achieve those outcomes through our big four, flexible computing, data protection and storage, automated infrastructure, and managed hybrid cloud. So flexible computing is public or private or hybrid cloud. This could be on-premises hardware and software, this could be public cloud, or it could be hyper-converged in a co-location facility. Now, a critical part of flexible computing is making sure that we're storing and protecting the data, and also making sure that the data is resilient. Wherever that data resides, again, that could be public, private, or hybrid cloud. Automated infrastructure allows our customers to turn off or on functionality and then scale easily or deploy very quickly in a, in a repeatable way. And this could be moving to DevOps or it could be infrastructure as code or containerizing applications. And then finally, managed hybrid cloud is really extending private cloud infrastructure into public cloud at the same time orchestrating across those private, public and hybrid cloud in, environments. So just to kind of bring this to life a little bit and by, by way of example, we have a customer who started out the conversation saying, hey, we need to do a full scale migration from our data center to our co-location facility, and they needed to do it in the cheapest way possible. Now, as part of our due diligence, we started asking them questions about, well, hey, what are your plans for application modernization or modernizing your, your operations? Or what are your plans for automation? Long story short, we work with the DVS team to engage with this customer on an infrastructure as code project. A second example is a long-term financial services customer who's actually running a pilot with us right now where we're delivering infrastructure at software speed with the purpose of enhancing their customer's experience. Specifically, we're standing up our first implementation of hardware as a service 
in a co-location facility and providing that entire consumption model back to this customer. The customer thinks it's great because they can still apply their same standards, their same tool sets, and their same processes. And then last, we've created what I think is just a really low barrier to entry assessments so that our customers can get started right away. This could be a data center monetization assessment or an automation foundation workshop or a cloud start readiness assessment. And a lot of customers start with these kinds of engagements so they can get a comfort level for how we in HI deliver a solution to them. So I really hope this information is helpful. Thank you and I look forward to talking with you about how we can help your customers achieve their outcomes through hybrid infrastructure solutions. I hope that you found this content both informative and helpful, and I would encourage you to learn more by reaching out to your CDW team. They have the best in industry resources within each one of these areas for you to leverage. Thank you again for your investment in us.